I am talking about treatment for PANS and PANDAS today. If you have a child with PANS and PANDAS, you're up at 2 a.m. searching for treatments that's going to help them. This is an important episode you need to listen to. Let's start in with some of the PANS PANDAS basics, but really this is going to be a conversation about the different treatments and, you know, how they work, why they work, and, you know, what should we do in the past, right? Because if everybody knows, I'm a PANS mom. So how do I even know if it's PANS or PANDAS? I think that's an important conversation to talk about because there's still a lot of misinformation. We don't have enough trained physicians and mental health providers, those frontline workers, helping parents to navigate through this. We really don't. So let's talk about some of the common features of PANS and PANDAS. So there are a lot of things that may be familiar. You can struggle with attention. You can have OCD. There can be tics. There can be separation anxiety, frequent urination, school refusal, anger, rage, brain fog, a loss of skills, particularly in learning, reading, math, um, also a loss of coordination or memory. Um, we can have sleep issues, migraines, headaches. There can be a variety of symptoms and definitely there are core symptoms that must be present, right? So, you know, there, there has to be a sudden onset for pans and pandas, and that can be a worsening of what's already there. You know, I love to talk about that because nobody talks about it. So you can have ADHD and the next thing you know, like complete memory loss, like almost, you know, almost appears that they're having seizures. You can even have seizures with tick-borne infection or uh, different types of infections and toxins. I've seen it happen. And we're really talking about infections and toxins, things like mold, um, other different exposures that uh, can set off the nervous system, but there has to be a worsening of, of something that's there, right? Um, and yes, ticks and OCD and food restriction are probably our most common, but you also can see, you know, depression. Typically when this has gone on a long time, it's a shopping cart of diagnoses, right? Um, and there may be multiple things. Now, when you're almost lucky enough where it's overnight, you know something's wrong. A sudden onset of a problem is not normal. And that is so important to remember that. And it doesn't always mean it's psychosis, especially when it's younger kids. Even though tick-borne illnesses, um, you know, parasites can trigger psychosis, um, you know, it's very scary when your child all of a sudden has a sudden onset and you need to rule out pans and pandas and you need to push for it with your provider or find somebody who will help you. So let's talk about PANS and PANDAS treatments um, because these are important, right? And, you know, it helps us to understand. And there are many paths and there is no right path. We have to look at the effect of these infections and toxins on the brain and behavior. Um, and everyone is affected differently. And why? You know, why does it affect one person when you get bitten by a tick and not another? Well, we don't have a clear path, but we know genetic variants are a part of it. We know stress is a part of it. Um, and those genetic variants have a lot to do with how our body has certain nutrients available, how they can clear toxins. Um, we also know that there is um, comorbidity with head injury. So head injury can open up the bread, blood brain barrier. Um, and just chronic stress states are definitely um, going to cause a uh, an exacerbation and a minimum of symptoms, but really could be the linchpin. So we'll talk a little bit about it. So let's talk about my five-pronged approach to PANS PANDAS treatment. So first of all, what are the most common treatments, right? So we have antimicrobial toxin treatment and uh, immune treatment right? So these are typically what are, where do most people start when they know there's an infection? Antibiotics. So those can be traditional antibiotics um, for tick-borne infection, for strep and whatnot. And please know, I'm not opposed to anything. This is really like when it comes to pans and pandas, we have to be smart and strategic. I think that is what is missing in a lot of provider treatment that I get to see um, as being part of a care treatment. Care plan. So antibiotics can be traditional or they can be herbal. And I want to say this very clearly, 
that the herbal treatments have a lot of efficacy. There's a lot of great uh, research out of the University of New Haven with Dr. Um, Sappy, who looks at the Cowden protocol. Now, why is the herbal treatments, why are they beneficial? So they target infections without destroying everything around it. Now, sometimes, you know, you need, of course, a doxy. So the other problem with treatment with particularly tick-borne infection is that we know a spirochete takes 28 days to cycle, and most people are only given two weeks of antibiotics. Why this has happened, the top minds in the world of Lyme have no idea. But back in the 90s, they did long-term antibiotic treatment. And guess what? We had a lot less chronic Lyme cases, which really is the overlap with pants or autoimmune encephalopathy. So antibiotic treatment is still a very valid treatment. It's just that we need to open our mind and think about herbals. Now, remember, herbal treatments in China have been used for over 5,000 years. Uh, we do have solid research. Um, and in China, they are in PubMed, their research, it's the same for herbals and traditional pharmac pharmacologicals, right? So plasmapheresis is another common traditional treatment for pans and pandas. And basically it removes the antibodies from the blood. Um, it's actually a treatment that has sort of become popular again and people can be responsive to it and very helpful. IVIG is also um, something that isn't done right in the beginning and should never be done right in the beginning. Um, it's basically a way that helps your body's your own immune system, right? Um, and why do I say it shouldn't be done in the beginning? It is a very intense therapy. Um, it can be very traumatic for people. It can be very effective, but there are many things that can be tried. Sometimes I see people jump to that almost immediately before they've even tried, you know, herbals or, you know, homeopathy and some of the other things. So, you got to do things in the right order and have a trusted provider that can walk you through. And that's a decision you have to make with your provider. Um, certainly anti-inflammatory drugs can be very helpful. Um, and people use a variety. Some things are even over the counter um, and including, you know, turmeric and, and essential oils. Um, but we know that brain inflammation is a big part of why, <laughs> you know, somebody isn't getting better and, and getting that inflammation down has to be a part of your care plan. Um, so let's talk about some of the other treatments. So when I see people really struggling and not getting better, and I talk about this and go back and listen to the other parts of the PANS PANDA series, but typically they are not addressing calming the nervous system. They are not properly doing detoxification and they're just not getting behavioral and, you know, parenting therapy. And, you know, why is this so important, right? It's so important because once that nervous system is so stress activated, the body can heal. Okay. Let's say that again, once the nervous system is stress activated, you're in a fight, flight, or freeze, the body can heal. So we've got to have treatments in place. What do I use? I use PEMF. I use things like our magnesium, our multi-mag um, brain formula. We use meditation. If somebody can do it, we use breath work. We use neurofeedback. You've got to get that nervous system regulated. And on the behavioral side, you know, as I talked about in my episode about the trauma of pans, pandas and chronic health, mental health issues, you need family support. You need know, to know how to address those behaviors because if you're not, you're just not going to move forward. And that is why I really believe in a five-pronged approach, right? We often only talk about immune antimicrobials and behavioral therapy, but you've got to regulate the nervous system. You have to address detoxification. I feel that those two things become really why people don't get better and don't get over that hump. Um, so let's talk about natural therapies, why they're essential. So having worked with so many individuals with pans and pandas, once you're in, you know, you have infections and toxins beyond six months, I just don't see people getting better without adding natural therapies. And what are natural therapies? The ones we talked about. So nutrition, great blog about, um, you know, pans, pandas diet, essentially it's an anti-inflammatory diet. You know, what are supplements that can be added? How can you calm that nervous system? 
These are all parts of things that must be in a care plan, not to just address pans and pandas today, but also to address future flares. I mean, anybody who works with me gets a flare care plan um, because, you know, once you your immune system is activated, and I do believe in healing pans, we're going to talk about it, you need to keep uh, lubricating your system, keeping that stress at bay, improving detoxification, getting sleep. So if you're looking for support, go to drrosanne.com forward slash help. Uh, we love to help our pans, pandas, family, families, and I love training other professionals about pans and pandas too. So wherever you are in your journey is exactly where you need to be. And I hope you got some information about some of the best treatments you want to be consistent and you always want to integrate natural therapies when you're dealing with pans and pandas. 